So today we'll continue to look at some aspects of Facebook because it's really important for, for businesses uh, to have a presence on Facebook. Uh, now Facebook is a double-edged sword. It's very valuable in that it can potentially reach a lot of people, but the downside of it is that there are so many people that you might not be targeting those that you really want to target. Uh, and then unfortunately the answer for that is there's a whole system to pay Facebook to reach more people. So throughout the years I often hear people saying, oh no, Facebook's going to shut down, or oh no, Facebook's going to charge you to use it. Uh, no, Facebook's not going to shut down, but yes, they do charge you to quote-unquote use it. This is for the businesses, however. It's not for regular people connecting with friends and family. They're not going to charge you for that. But for connecting as a brand, as a company and so forth, they're not going to force you, you're not going to need to pay to use Facebook, but it's highly, highly recommended uh, by Facebook to pay. Uh, and I'll explain what that all is in just a moment. The, just to let you know, the assignment will not require you to, to pay for anything. I'm going to teach you about this concept in Facebook, and then the assignment is not is not you're not going to pay for anything. But you might decide, I might want to do it because you can pay as little as one dollar and still reach more people than you could have without paying. So that's why I'm saying it's a double-edged sword. Facebook is really good, lots of people to reach, but really to use it the best, you should budget a little bit. Um, and I'll tell you all the details about that as we, as we do it. Go ahead and log into your uh, Facebook account if you have not done so yet. Remember, you need to log in as your personal account. You need to log in as your personal account, and then we will be able to access the business accounts. Go ahead and log in. So when you're logged in, the first thing that you'll see is that you're logged into your personal account. And you want to switch over to your business page. Remember that little triangle on the top right? So click on that to switch to it. That's the way that I'm the most sure that I've switched to the right account. Switch over to your business page. Like I said, uh, and this will be part of the assignment. You need to make sure you, you fill in the logo and that background graphic and, and so forth. Let's talk about some content, because this is the thing about a social network, especially if you're new. You want a lot of uh, followers, so when you post something, your followers could see stuff that they care about. But if you don't have any posts first, it's hard to get followers. So you see it's kind of a vicious cycle. I want followers, but I don't have any content. So I'll post content, but there's no followers to pay attention. So I would say, really, do add content first, even though you're talking to no one you don't have any followers, yes, put content because eventually as we try to attract content, it's going to go better that there's something there for people to care about uh, and to give you a like uh, as opposed to a page that's like this where I have nothing here and I'm trying to get likes here, that's going to be difficult. So uh, since most of us already have experience in Facebook, I'll just mention this briefly, but uh, the business page on Facebook has a slightly different things. Uh, notice here we can do updates. We can do status update, which is just simple text like, glad to be on Facebook. And of course you can attach, of course you can attach um, a feeling or you can attach a photo and so forth or a location. But a, a plain old status update is just some text and of course here you can write whatever you want. You're not limited like on Twitter. You're not limited to 140 characters. You can type, I don't know, thousands, but I don't think people really are going to read a whole essay on Facebook. They're going to look at a picture maybe. They're going to look at some text and follow a link, but they're not going to look at a paragraph of content. So plain old status update text. I can post that. And of course I can delete it. I can edit it. You probably already know this. Uh, you click the little triangle there and you can go back to delete it, you can edit it, etc. 
Mateo is going to write something. Sale this Saturday. And notice I've got post, but I've also got the ability with that little triangle to schedule the post. So I don't have to be tied to my computer every time I want to post something. Let's say I'm planning that this week I'm going to post three things. Something on Monday, something on Wednesday, something on Friday. I don't need to be logged in on Monday and Wednesday and Friday to post those things. I can set aside some time on Sunday and then select schedule. And so I have all my three posts ready on Sunday. I schedule them throughout the week and I won't have to log in to actually post them. That's cool. So if I click schedule, right there, I'm going to say, okay, well, today's the 15th. I'm going to say I'm going to post this on Friday and even the time. So I can do this at uh, 2 02 p.m. I can schedule that. And it'll say there, it'll say, um, one scheduled post, scheduled for Friday at 2.02 p.m. Exactly. Uh, this helps you keep track of all that stuff because if you don't remember on that day and then you have to run to the computer to do that post, maybe you wasted some time and, and effort. So scheduling things in advance is really helpful. However, um, because uh, like a lot of what computers are or social media, there can be pitfalls, of course. I've seen several times that companies have scheduled posts and some event happens in the real world and suddenly that post is either irrelevant or insensitive. Uh, like, um, I forgot, like a couple of years ago, there was, uh, anyone remember the shooting in Colorado in the Colorado movie theater? Uh, and so some company on their Facebook was was going to post something and uh, they had it auto posting and so after the shooting their page still posted something and in light of the shooting that post was very insensitive so people were like how could you write that it was like, well, we auto scheduled it a month ago so um, be careful about that keep that in mind because things could happen in the real world that uh, alter the, the the post and it's still going automatically so there's a screen here uh, over on posts. At the top, you've got page, messages, notifications, and posts. That'll show you all the posts you've created or scheduled. Right there, scheduled posts. So that's how you can keep track of them. If you've got more than one person working on this Facebook page, um, it's a good idea to go check out the post screen. That way you're in sync with what other people are doing and you don't accidentally schedule the same post. So posting text, that's easy. Scheduling posts, that's easy. We've got photos and video. So we can upload a photo, we can upload a video um, to also albums. Uh, studies show that, uh, that uh, multimedia, which are just pictures or video, uh, is really effective on social media. Because <clears throat> like a boring, you know, little bit of text like that is, it gets the job done, but it's a little boring. But if this here also had a video to catch your attention, uh, like a 10 second video or a one minute video or whatever, that's even better. Um, so photos or video. Let's see, I'm going to upload a photo here. We've got some photos over in the pictures. I'm going to upload a photo. And again, uh, what you've learned on Twitter, you can also apply to Facebook in that, okay, You've got a social media, maybe you've got 20 followers or 200 followers. What's the point of your social media? What are you going to do with it? Are you going to be showing off your, your, your products, your food, your album, your paintings? Are you going to have links to your product? Are you going to just build a community of question and answers? What's the point of your social media? I'm going to say I'm going to put that picture and when you post anything, think about it in terms of why would the user, why would your follower care? What's in it for them? Are they going to get a laugh out of it? Are they going to get a good feeling? Are they going to get information, a link to the product? What's the point? So I'm going to say here, uh, meet 
uh, Clara the Koala, our official mascot. And then a link. Just type a link here. Victor's art.info slash about, let's say. So whatever you're doing on social media shouldn't be a dead end. Yeah, that's a nice picture. Someone click like, they move on with their life. We don't want that. We don't want that dead end. We want to balance that with also some content that also directs people to something, usually your website. That's where you're going to get people to sign up for your newsletter or look at the price of your art or look at the packages of your web design company or hire you or contact you because you can't do any of that on Facebook. You can't sell your product. You can't sell your service. Um, you've got communication with the messaging system, but um, you can't capture the information like, uh, you know, if someone's trying to hire you for web design on your website, you can create a form that says, what's your budget? What's your timeline? Um, call us now. You know, we can put that on your website, but you can't really do that on, on Facebook. So think about balancing content that is a dead end you know if I posted simply something like uh, today is a great day because it's uh, the first day of spring you know some you might get some likes but that it kind of ends there doesn't it if you've also got a link to someplace else that's a little better it's up to you to decide how much to balance that you don't want to always be saying buy this subscribe to that look at this you know that that's the tightrope you have to walk between something interesting and relevant and something like a sale. So that'll depend on you how much you want to do that. So text post, video, or photo post. Depending on your page, you might also have um, these items over here. Event, milestone, and I'll show you an example from another client. There's also, what's that one called? I think it's called uh, coupon or deal or something. I'll show you in a moment. But here we can set up an event. So I can say, you know, Sunday sale. Uh, join us this Sunday for whatever. If your business is at a location, and they're on Facebook, you can also add an attachment to the location so people can uh, find your place on their device. Um, if you need to get tickets, you can connect that to a ticket seller like um, Ticketmaster or StubHub, and of course setting times and so forth. So I can set up an event, um, invite people to it, and uh, get people interested in coming to this real world or virtual event. And then you get this page, which is the actual events uh, screen, and people can, uh, can add to it. So this is a lot of great interactivity here. And so this particular event has that address, and you can share that on, on Twitter or on your email or put it on your website or whatever. Uh, so that now is, is an event, and people can, can click, you know, going or no thank you or maybe, and the number of guests. So it's its own page? It's not that it's exactly its own page, but it, it, it has its own address. Oh, okay and it's part of your page you know if you go back to your page it's going to show that it's there scheduled so it's on your page but it's got its own address 
when it when it expires, does it automatically delete itself? Mm -hmm. So we got milestones. These are useful because again, um, social media, the name, it's in the name, social. Uh, it's about interaction, connecting with people. So you can do uh, milestones and you can define these however you want. They're sort of like little things to pat yourself on the back. Let's say a milestone here, uh, uh, the title is going to be uh, sold our first painting location date time whatever let's say that was yesterday what's the story behind that again I can write a paragraph or whatever here and add a photo So then you get this uh, you get this item in the timeline. Um, people that follow you are going to see something that looks like that. It looks different from the other types of posts. It's a it's a milestone. Uh, people can like it or comment uh, comment on it, but it just kind of looks different. It stands out. Uh, these are again uh, useful to get people. Uh, to build a community on your page, to interact with you, to look at something interesting. So those are milestones. And as I said, there's one more item here. You, you, you might not have it for a variety of reasons. Maybe your page is too new, or maybe the type of page you created doesn't allow it. But let me show you here on an example. So this is one of the clients that uh, I manage. Uh, and you know you can always use the examples of of Facebook pages that you like just to kind of get inspiration. Uh, and so, you know, uh, take a look at these other items. But here, notice oh, this is what I call offer. So here it's got offer, event, or milestone. An offer, and I won't I won't do it for the client here. But an offer is a way for you to get people to. Um, to buy something of yours, but you have to set up something about like buy one get one free or five percent off or use this coupon code, that sort of thing. So it needs a little more setup. Not everyone needs it, but you can look at it like right here. Take twenty five percent off your total purchase, and you have to create this offer and <coughs> add, add a picture and set if there's a limit and expiration date and so forth. So you can make these virtual coupons in Facebook. Not every page might have it, though. Like I said, it's going to be in that in that item there. If yours doesn't have it, then it, it doesn't have it. Um, like this one over here has it. Maybe because the page is just brand new, it doesn't have it yet. Now, as I've been posting this stuff here, I don't really have an audience. I have one like, and as you recall, that's myself. I gave my own page a like. The point of likes, not only does it boost your ego, but the point is this, these are your followers. These are your fans. And in the old days, what, what, what would happen was, um, if you like the page, basically you're giving consent to that page so that when you log in to your personal account and you look at your stream over here, you're going to see all of the content of uh, whatever someone, whatever that page posted. That's what the like is. It's like, uh, bring this uh, to, uh, bring this content to me. You know, I agree to that. That's what the like was. What it is nowadays 
uh, unfortunately, is not it's not that anymore. It's not that you're inviting uh, people's content onto your home screen anymore, unfortunately. Now, this is where the payment comes in. Uh, because Facebook wants to, quote unquote, show the most relevant content to you, it shows you more of your friends and family stuff instead of business stuff. So that's bad for you, because just because you have a hundred likes doesn't mean all 100 of those people will see your coupon. Maybe seven see it. I don't know. I don't know what the algorithm is. Facebook has that information secret. But the fact is that it's not what like it used to be. So that's when we have to talk about um, paying for more visibility. And there's a couple of ways to do it. You can pay some amount to get more attention for your whole page in general. You know, on the right side, you're going to see like an ad like that. So you can either be paying for more visibility for your whole page, or you can pay for visibility on a post. Notice these posts here say boost post. Let me show you what that's about. You can either do this before or after you post. So if I was about to make a brand new post here, I've got the option to boost it. I kind of personally like to post the post first and then boost it. Just because if you leave the screen where you're boosting, before you're done with it, you could lose the whole post that you're creating. It could refresh and you could lose it all. So I would prefer to post it and then boost it. What I mean by boosting is this. I click on any one of these posts that I've made and it says, okay, let's boost this. Let's show this to more people. As I said, you might have a hundred followers, but that doesn't or a hundred likes, but that does not mean that a hundred people will see it. Who knows how many? Yeah, it's relatively low. Here there's Facebook is saying, well, if you invest two hundred dollars, um, you will be able to reach up to a thousand more people. I don't have a thousand likes, but I could reach up to a thousand people. That's great. Paying two hundred dollars is not so great, but um, I could reach more people there. Notice this goes here, twenty, sixty, and you and you might say, "Well, I thought you said you could pay a dollar." You can. You have to choose your own price here. One dollar. So not a thousand people. 160 people, which is still way better than right now what I have. I have one like. It's just me. So if I pay one dollar, I can start to reach more people. Um, let's say uh, I'm going to spend ten dollars, and I'm going to spread this to seven days. So for the next seven days, Facebook will automatically use X amount of that ten dollars to try to reach more people. Notice how that's up to 920 people. A moment ago it was saying $200 to reach 1,000 people. And here I'm saying $10 to reach almost 1,000 people. But I'm spreading it out on the whole week. You will spend about $1.43 per day. It's not just about throwing money at it and for the amount of time. It's about targeting. So I don't like that this does this automatically. This always is confusing when I tell people about it. I also want to set a target audience. The last target audience that I was playing with was rich people. Um, and I also have these other ones, SWC students, foodies, and parents. Uh, ignore that for the moment because I'm going to do this. Create new audience. So who would care about that post? This is the audience. Let me clear this out. Yeah, I'm getting to that. So here under the create audience, we give it a name. Wh who's this audience that you're trying to reach? This can be any name. You can then target by location. So for example, a city, a country, or a state. Let's say I want to target people in Canada. So I can create here a post that will target people in 
Canada. And um, I can add more than one country. Canada, Mexico. So let's say I'm targeting those areas. I can say by state. I want to target people in Delaware. And North Dakota. I can target age range. Remember when we created the Facebook page, it kind of asked us some of this stuff? Uh, so this should be a little familiar. Uh, so here we're targeting this one post, not the whole page. This one post might be relevant to these people. Uh, which people? Well, we then specify age range. Let's say the people that would care about my product or whatever are going to be between 30 and 40 years old. both men and women, and then interests. Here I would type some keywords or phrases about what they would care. So this is uh, art, let's say photography, and it gives me more suggestions. Fine art photography, yeah. Street photography, yeah. Fashion photography. So I think it said four to ten interests. So this is uh, why you want to think about your target audience in that assignment, right? Um, it's not that everyone wants your product. The best uh, audience is the one that you focus on, the one that would care more about your product or your organization or, or whatever. So if you add some interests here, these are the interests that people uh, kind of some subconsciously perhaps uh, let Facebook know. When you log in, it asks you, did you read any good books? And then you write here, yeah, I read that one book about those, uh, the, that gray color. So then it shows up right here, and then you can target those people. So I've created a target audience, and I'm spending $10, and it can reach up to 6,000 people. Yeah. So wait. That ten dollars you just can uh, that is going to be just for one place. For one post. Oh, okay. One this post. one post right here that I want people see how I said uh, meet Claire the koala, our official mascot. Follow the link. That's that one post that will be shown to about up to six thousand people. Okay. So that's why it's important. If this was just a picture of the koala, this would be a waste of money because there's no end result. There's no continuation. Uh, here, I've got that link. And maybe, the, maybe that link was to, to buy the product or to sign up for my newsletter or to read my latest blog post. You know, what's the point of the post? And then I'm boosting it so that more people can see it, not just the one like that I have. As I said, let's see. Let's say I want to target this for one day and just one dollar. That can still reach up to a thousand people, three hundred ninety to a thousand people. So, this is what I'm saying about the double-edged sword: that uh, Facebook could reach a lot of people, but really, to reach them, you you, you should pay. How much? As little as one dollar. Uh, what's the maximum? I don't know. Let me put in a crazy value here: nine hundred ninety-nine dollars. That's, that's one of the ways Facebook makes, makes a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nine hundred dollars. Nine hundred ninety-five dollars. Huh. I can spend all the way up to nine hundred ninety-eight dollars on Facebook. That might sound crazy, but that's nothing for McDonald's. That's nothing for Nike. That's nothing for Southwestern College. Um, for you, it's a lot. For me, it's a lot. But for big companies, that's how they get uh, 2 million likes, right?
So, question there, ladies? Um, yeah, the boost post? Yeah. You might not be able to because your is your page very new? Yeah, yeah it's, it might be too new. It doesn't let you yet. Uh, I think you might have to get uh, 25 likes and then you'll unlock more features. So that's why maybe you want to um, suggest to your friends and family, give me a like. So at least you get the 25 likes and then you get more features. If you don't have any likes, you don't get it? I think you need 25 likes. So, so it depends on like, the more you want to Mm -hmm. But is there anywhere where we can see like a bracket? Um, what are they based on? Like cities or amount? Yeah, what I was saying right here a moment ago, when you're setting your audience, this is where, where you target it to cities or to people or genders or ages. So you set an audience and that's who's going to see it. So it's not just thrown out through the whole billion people on Facebook. It's targeted to these people that might care more. No, no, no. Like I already, I'm saying like the more you add, the more you have to pay. Like if you want to have no. Cities, no, that doesn't matter. Good thing that that doesn't matter. Targeting it to certain cities or more than one city or country that does not factor into the price. It still could be a dollar. What you're paying for is how long to run the campaign and also how many more possible reach. So if I put it on $20, I'm reaching up to 10,000 more people within the audience that I've created here. Okay, so the, the, like the states, countries, whatever, that doesn't matter. It's the amount of people. Yeah, the, exactly. The more people you want to reach is better, is, relates to the budget. It's $20 still. Yeah, between day. three and ten thousand for one day. But it might be better if I spread that out for a few more days. Um, see that up between four and twelve thousand mm -hmm. for seven days. So it's going to try to reach more people for a little bit longer time, um, and uh, it does give you good results. I'll show examples from a client here that boosting does work, and it might sound like, hey, that's kind of cheating. So it works. Uh, so you get better results in Facebook if you pay. That's not fair. That's true. The only answer to that is don't use Facebook. You know, if you're gonna, what's that? I, I think it does work. It, it does work. Unfortunately, it used to be as long as I got that like, I could reach an audience. But because there's so many people on Facebook and so many companies on Facebook, and people don't want to see um, you know, advertisement, they want to see their friends and family stuff. Facebook says, okay, we'll we'll make it so that people see friends and family stuff, not advertising. If you pay, then you'll see advertising, and then you can reach more people. But then again, you're paying real money. This is not Farmville money. This is real money. And how do I know, how, how can I find out how many people am I? Um, you, can you have to make sure you've switched over to your account, and then click on the name of your, uh, of your page, and on the left side, you'll see your likes. No, no, I'm saying, like, not the likes, like, because they pay, they charge you depending on the amount of people you want to. Uh -huh. so, and right now, how can I see how many people, how much people like I have on my, like I'm requesting. From I'm boosting? Because I'm not able to see uh, that. So that's the only way I can see it? It's good, exactly. It's going to be only here. This is the estimated people reach, so this is where it'll tell you how many people you might be reaching. You have to do the boost post, but you don't have boost posting okay, ability yeah, just yet. And I'm not exactly sure why sometimes it gives you that or not. Most likely because I've done this before. I, I run several companies, and so I've, I, they, they trust me for that, so I've got the boost post. Even though I've only got one like. You, because maybe this is your very first Facebook page you know you might have you might have had your personal one this is your first Facebook page you're not really quite um, you know trusted by Facebook yet and that's why you might not have the boost post yet so get more likes and that should help you I would shoot for 25 likes and that should give you more Facebook abilities
So boosting the post is very uh, valuable, and as I said, it could be a, it could be a dollar. That'll work. Um, you're you're paying with a debit or credit card. Um, on the bottom here, it's ready to go. I've already set this up. If you're doing this for the first time, it'll probably ask you for a payment method. So it's a matter of putting in a card, and I would recommend a credit card, not a debit card. Uh, that way, it'll be uh, easier to deal with any disputes monetarily. You know, it's always easier to get your money back from a credit card rather than a debit card. Let me switch over to a client over here where we boost posts on a regular basis. We usually spend about 20 and 30 dollars for a week. Um, actually, you, you guys can check this. Do you have? You might not have this yet, but on the top you, you should have page, message, notification, post. Do any of you have one extra tab here called insights? Anyone see insights at the top there? You might not see insights yet again until you get traffic or you get more likes. Uh, but I'll show you an example here. This is one that's been around a while. It's got a few thousand likes. And I've got here insights. So if I take a quick look at insights, all right, so. Look at here on on reach. This um, chart shows a couple of spikes, a light orange and a dark orange. The light orange up there says organic, and then the dark orange says paid. So organic is that you've got a uh, post that you've added that has no extra boosting upon it, that it doesn't have, that you didn't pay for it. So the paid one, look at that in contrast, it has uh, a huge spike because it works. More people are reached by, uh, by actually paying for it. So comparatively, 600 people were reached without paying. And at the same time period, 6,000 people were reached by paying for it. Look at that huge spike there. 9,000 were reached by boosting, as opposed to organic was only 900. So the numbers don't always correspond exactly like that. It's not that it's always 1,000 more. Notice over here in this part, 293, 239 compared to 1,832. And over here... So it's not that it's always a thousand more, it's just that it, that's what it kind of happened to be here. But we're seeing the obvious result here. This was at a time where on each of these probably, uh, that might have been like a week uh, of time, and it was um, boosted. Recently, we have not been boosting, but still look at this, um, this reach here. That was 590, and then here, 216. These little spikes are usually when posting something new. So what we're doing is we're seeing activity, um, either organic or paid, but we're seeing that paid activity definitely works more. It reaches more people. Yes? If you have a page that has had activity, you're going to see at the top here not only page messages, but you'll also see insights. So that means that once you've added more activity, once you've gotten activity, then that's what you'll see. You rock, Victor! It's supposed to be hell you. I've seen like in like three, four months. Okay. Sorry Thank about you. the guys. This guy's awesome. It's kind of cool. It's supposed to see you again. Thank you. <laughs> so that's a Facebook page. Um, boosting is very uh, useful, um, but it's not free. It is real money that you are spending, and it could result in more um, activity, more pages and page views and so forth. So for the assignment that I'm going to give you in a moment, um, it's not required at all to to pay for this stuff, of course. but um, 
I've seen you shown you some statistics that it does it does work. Uh, so any uh, general questions on Facebook? Uh huh. So in, when when you choose edit edit audience here in, in interest, if I if I write their churches like in or, or in order to get customers from churches, right? Mm -hmm. So if I put their churches, so can I choose the the state from I'm going to choose those people or it's just from the United States? Look up here, we've got location and we can go to countries, states, or cities. So yeah, any interest that you're putting in here, you can target it to actual um, cities or states. And if you start typing in something, I would take a look at the recommendations because just because if I type church, that might not be the best. Uh -huh. Perhaps if I select one of these, these will um, maybe target a little bit more of what you want because these are actually things that people have selected on Facebook. There is data that people have selected those interests. If you add an interest here, you might not reach that many people. So you want to start typing and then take some of the suggestions. I'm going to type here Catholic Church, and then it says, well, maybe you also want Christian Church, maybe you also want Ecclesiology, and so forth. How many can you put there? It recommends 4 to 10. Okay. So at, at, at least 4, and at the most 10. All right, any other questions? Okay, so um, it's good. It's a short lecture today because a lot of us already have experience in Facebook. Uh, there's a couple of little nuances which I just talked about: boosting posts, scheduling posts, uh, the other stuff you've already used Facebook before, probably. And then even if you haven't, well, you've used Twitter in this class at least. What you've learned in t for Twitter, you can also apply to Facebook. The big difference here is uh, boosting is very valuable. There is the ability to boost posts on Twitter as well. We never talked about it because I don't really use Twitter um, boosting posts on Twitter. We find that we get a lot better results boosting on Facebook because there's just so many more people. And we find that we using Twitter for free um, works well. You can still reach a lot of people um, without having to boost it on Twitter. So the, the homework assignment is available on Blackboard now. I'll give you a moment to print uh, after the lecture if you'd like, but if you take a quick look, it, it'll, it's a pretty uh, straightforward assignment. It's similar to Twitter. You have a week to work on this. You need to have your Facebook set up. So watch the previous video and this link here were to other uh, Facebook videos that I recorded outside of the class. Uh, uh, complete as much of the profile as possible, so your logo and your bio and so forth. Probably already have that done. Send me an email with your with your Facebook link so that I know where your, your page is at. And then follow these, these instructions here. So basically, um, from your business page, you're going to like at least five other business pages because a page can like a page. And the, the relevance of that is that hopefully you are liking pages uh, to see examples of what they're doing so that you can follow those examples and do them also. Maybe the kind of pictures that they use, the photography, you know, the photographic aesthetic, maybe the kinds of quotes or status updates that they're putting. So it's good to see what other people are doing and then synthesize that and then you do a version of it. Um, uh, at least one status update which will only be text, at least one update which is a photo, at least one that is a video. I didn't show you explicitly how to do a video but you can figure it out. It's very much like a photo. And yeah, you can just record a, a, a video right on your phone relevant to your company, not just you, you know, jumping off the roof or something. It has to be relevant to your business and then you want to post it on your page. 
create one milestone. And all of that is due by next Wednesday. So if you um, work a little bit on it today and tomorrow or whatever, you'll be done with it or uh, manage your time however you'd like. But that's, um, you know, that's a week from today. Any general questions? So that is, uh, that says, that is from Facebook, right? But there says the great assignment. Ignore that. Oh, okay. It says Facebook everywhere else, oh. everywhere else except there. Apologies. Okay. Yes? Would you recommend linking our Facebook with like the Instagram and Twitter and all the other social media? That's useful. You know, if you post something on Instagram, it can automatically go to Facebook and the other networks. That's useful. That saves you some time and effort. But uh, it's a little more effective to craft your message for each network. Because on Facebook, you can write a paragraph, and that paragraph doesn't fit on Twitter, and it looks awkward on Instagram. So yeah, for time saving, you could spread the message out quickly like that, but I recommend to craft your message for each platform. Maybe the same picture, but write a little bit something different about it on each network. I was also thinking because of like the hashtag on Instagram, yeah. so on Twitter, and then if you it to Facebook, and I'm not sure if people use hashtags on Facebook. All the networks have hashtags nowadays, but the most effective ones are on Twitter and Instagram. And Facebook does have hashtags, but have you ever clicked on a hashtag? Have you clicked on one? If you have, have you clicked on one recently? Probably not. So I don't think they really took off like the other networks. So hashtags are kind of optional. So we'll end the, the lecture at this point and uh, manage your time on the assignment, and uh, we'll have some lab time now.